Good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar on mining filtration sol solutions hosted on behalf of Donaldson, the largest provider of unique filtration technologies and high quality filters and parts. My name is Shannon Derejo and I'll be assisting the speakers in today's session. Before we get started, please note the chat and the Q&A are available to you. Please post your questions in the Q&A and your comments in the chat. Both the Q&A and the chat are at the bottom of your screen. Please also be aware that we are recording this webinar and we'll send the recording to you when it's available. Today's panel will explore the latest in mining filtration technology from Donaldson, where you'll discover how advanced filtration technologies provide comprehensive solutions for both above and below ground mining. You'll learn how these innovations reduce maintenance costs and boost equipment uptime, as well as much more. The speakers discussing this topic include Peter Jan Moons, the Marketing Manager for Europe, Middle East and Africa at Donaldson, Ivan Buerta, the Product Manager at Donaldson, and Ian Dutoy, the Regional and Contracts Manager at Highfelt Filters, an official Donaldson distributor. So without further ado, I'll hand over now to our speakers to start the discussion. Peter Jan, you're on mute. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Peter Jan Moons, and will be one of your speakers today for this joint webinar from Donaldson and Highfeld Filters. So today we will cover the aspects of how strategic alliances and advanced filtration will optimize and can optimize your operations. Because we all know there are always opportunities to improve. And when it comes to machine performance, we know a few. So, with that being said, and also with a short introduction, I'm happy and pleased to introduce you our panelists. So Ivan Bata, Ivan is our Donaldson uh, product manager with a mechanical engineering background, seven years within the company. And he's responsible for researching and releasing new products, primarily for the mining industry. He will bring you some cases about the performance of our technology and how they are contributing to mining operations in general. I'm also very pleased to have Ian Dutois with us, a, a valued partner. So Ian has a history of working in mechanical engineering in the industry, and he's extremely knowledgeable in the mining operations management in both open cast and underground mining industries. So, and Ian will inform you about how Highfelt Filters is providing that additional value to make your operationals more efficient and giving you that peace of mind. So with Highfelt as an experienced partner, you actually can rest assured of the necessary services to keep your operations going. Myself, I'm already about 12 years with Donaldson, and I've seen many great examples of how we can apply the right technologies that significantly contribute to a better operational efficiency and also an overall improved sustainability. It's just in so many cases that an industry or an operation is just not aware. And that is what we want to take today and have the opportunity to make you sure to make sure that you understand what effective filtration can do for you. So hence, I'm very glad to have you all with us. And with that being said, I will do a further uh, explanation of uh, what we can give you today. So at Donaldson, we know and understand the equipment performance and uptime challenges you're facing. Keeping equipment running is crucial. That's nothing new. So here you see actually a quick and high level overview of our solutions that we will cover today. From air filtration technology, protecting machines against heavy dust conditions, keeping the air clean, but also to fuel and loop filtration, keeping engine liquids in good condition and protecting critical components. Also hydraulics play a crucial role in the overall performance of these machines. But our experts will tell you all about these things. Because we cannot tell you everything about our services and technologies, that would simply take too long and won't be too relevant for you at this stage. So let us tell you what matters most. Basically, reducing maintenance costs, increasing the performance and uptime of your mining equipment, 
and how we are approaching the total cost of ownership improvements. Even we'll also show you some examples here and how Highfeld Filters is set up to optimize your operational efficiencies and how their approach brings value to your organization. Basically, from the lab to the mine. So let's get you going on how to improve your total cost of ownership. Something all manufacturers, all suppliers like us promise, but we have the proof. So within this webinar, you will see how technologies contribute to efficient mining operations and deliver that sustainable TCO reductions. We have been in the field of mining for decades. We have supported large and small mining operations across the world, and we know the differences made at the mine site because all your realities are different. From our lab and R&D centers, in which we develop our technologies to making them work and add value at your mine site. So we apply that knowledge to support your operations, provide you with relevant insights and how effective filtration makes a difference and how it advances your business. So our aim is really to provide you with that peace of mind, to provide you with a service you need to keep your operations going. We understand that efficiency and uptime that you need your mind to run at maximum pace to be competitive. So how can we contribute to the long-term and sustainable improvement? Also here, we will make sure that you can rely on partnerships that know how to carry high responsibility and assuring you have the products available at the site and to offer technical support when and wherever you need it. So before I give that uh, the word to Ivan, here is what he will cover. How the difference is made in the field from an easy assessment of your service kit to understanding cleanliness of fuel is crucial to your operations. And yes, as said before, the reality on the field is different. Hence, we believe in a proven by trial approach. So you got to know that we get recovered in any case. When it comes to filtration, we know how to advance your business. So I give now the word to Ivan. Ivan, up to you. Yeah, thanks, Peter Jan. Uh, good afternoon, everyone that's joined. Um, yeah, let's run through some examples and just show some of the technologies behind it. Uh, going to the next slide there. Uh, so yeah, what we're seeing there is a, a PC4000 face shovel uh, at one of our end users. And uh, we managed to provide them with a, a very nice cost saving as well as improvement in ISO cleanliness levels. Um, over, you can see the value there is translated into uh, dollars. So what you're looking at is about $150,000 a year. That's over the amount of the machines they have. So, yeah, the sorry, the initial source pricing that was from an OE 1,000-hour service kit. And then compared to the Donaldson developed aftermarket kit, um, I think just worth mentioning is that Donaldson did develop a hydraulic filter specific for this application we didn't have in our range to complete the service kit. And um, another important point to mention is that the cleanliness levels there that were maintained. So we didn't just reduce it for an initial period, the cleanliness le levels were maintained. And um, yeah, there's obviously a lot of other spin-off benefits that we didn't measure. And that's like your machine uptime for productivity and uh, reduced CapEx, oh, sorry, OPEX. Next slide, PTR. Um, and then just going into a bit of fuel management. So looking at uh, fuel management, Donaldson sort of splits it into two categories. We've got stationary and uh, on board. So stationary is more your diesel tanks, fuel farms, dispensing point. And on board uh, it states basically it's uh, filters fitted to a vehicle. So uh, I think an important point that people don't often think about is that most of your fuel filters are single pass, which means they have one chance to capture contaminants, unlike a circuit like your lube or hydraulic. So your, your fuel filter does make quite a, a big impact and it should be crucial to your considerations. Next slide. Um, so there on the right, the video shows what, um, the effect of capturing, capturing of contaminants of our blue element that's above P56A666. So that's in the lab condition, obviously. 
and um, just how it's managing to show the, the uh, dirt holding capacity of the unit there. So what happens to your diesel when it's stored in, in storage tanks over time? Uh, a lot of time you start getting separation, your water forms at the bottom. And then in between your water and diesel layer, you start getting microbial growth, which is a very bad thing to start happening. And then from there, or as it stands, you start getting your, your you start getting your sludge uh, formation and all your sludge and things start sitting at the bottom. And as we know that in a diesel tank, your normal takeoff point for dispensing is at the bottom. So those lovely stuff that's been accumulated there, that's all gonna go straight into your equipment. Uh, next slide. So we we have a philosophy of uh, for when it comes to bulk fuel management, and that's clean, protect, and polish. Um, so you clean your incoming fuel uh, normally through a high volume uh, coalescing filter uh, and then a particulate filter for protect. Um, the storing is uh, in a controlled environment, so that's where we don't generally recommend the Donaldson trap breathers. Uh, they make use of a thermal reactive media, which keeps your diesel dry, keeps the moisture out. Also, if there was moisture in the tank, if you do fit a, a trap breather, it will sort that out. Um, diesel tanks breathe. Um, a lot of people don't know, perhaps, but they expand and they contract with temperature. Um, and as such, then they need protection from, from the elements. So most bulk containers, if you go to a site, uh, be it a contractor site or so, they'll use just a little shower head there. And yeah, that helps absolutely nothing at all. Um, on the polish side, so that's cleaning the diesel before dispensing it into the equipment. Um, so there we've got high efficiency, high efficiency filtration, and that reduces your ISO cleanliness quite, quite drastically. And that, that in turn improves your, your total cost of ownership. Um, and from there on, we'll see a bit later on, there's an, a big example on how fuel management and affects your, your cost. Um, the bottom picture there shows our X-Max manifold fitted with our blue spin-on filters. That was the one in the video uh, we saw just on the previous slide. And uh, we recently also launched another manifold with the capability to take the Duramax cans, which is the orange ones, for those who are familiar with our product. Um, just be uh, aware that there, there's different threads on the elements, so they're not interchangeable. So you need to fit the correct manifold to your application, like when the desired results that you wish to achieve. Next slide. All right, so yeah, this is quite a big uh, case study, and it's from Australia, um, from our counterparts over there. So they share very similar operating conditions as in Africa. So the site had about 50 trucks. Uh, the injectors, any site injector should be lasting on those old trucks about 20, 22,000 hours. Uh, they, had, they were experiencing 11,000 hours. Um, so if you start looking at how much... Uh, Time it's the, the equipment runs, the, the fuel it burns per day. And so big mine sites, relatively big, big, that's about 71 million liters per year. Um, another problem that they had was on the G-rotor pump on the engine. So your G-rotor pump feeds your high pressure pump. Uh, they had premature failures there. And um, the, the, the cost of a, a new pump, uh, G-rotor pump, there was about 60,000 US uh, Australian dollars. And you see the, the high cost associated with the engine rebuild, uh, the injector parts. So you've got a 16 cylinder engine uh, at $6,000 uh, $6, a pop. So that's, that's quite a bit of uh, unplanned expenditure. If you have, you know, if you were supposed to achieve 22,000 hours, you're only getting 11,000. And then your fuel uh, filter change out is about 831. So I think just percentage wise, it shows. Yeah, uh, you know, your filter is your probably your, your cheapest way to fix something. If you just look at that, next slide. So, what was the impacts of their poor uh, fuel filtration that they were seeing there? So, the inject injector life were half of what it should be. So, if and that's just now over a year on the right hand side, the the totals that you're seeing there, that's the cost of, of the yearly uh, expenditure. So. You will pay for clean fuel, one way, one point or another. So you're either going to pay for it at your bulk uh, or in, before onboarding, like your bulk storage and uh, your onboard filtration, or you're going to have to pay for it in, uh, you know, in, in replacement parts and maintenance. So, as we're seeing there, the 
uh, the injector life was half short, uh, the short filter life. So they were getting actually less than 500 hours out of the, the filters and they wanted to achieve about a thousand. The premature gyrotopump failures, which they were having, they were experiencing 10 a year. So that, yeah, that's $600,000 uh, a year. Uh, the unscheduled maintenance, uh, low power events. Uh, so premature, uh, uh, low power events were about nine a year. And uh, the premature engine rebuilds, uh, that's about one a year. Those are quite expensive. You know, it's not just the cost of that. Uh, um, you know, it's the cost of losing the, the equipment out of production and operation. Um, higher suit index. So because your, your fuel isn't burning the way it should, you, you emitting, you're burning a lot more. There's a lot more suit coming out of it. Uh, a lot of that suit goes into your filters again. So, you know, if there's bypass, it depends. It, it can be on the, the, the rings, on the piston. It can be via the exhaust into the air intake system. So, yeah, the, the suit comes into play. And then reduced fuel burn, um, it's, it's probably a bit hard to measure. But if your fuel isn't clean as it should be, if, if you're spending 2% more um, or you're consuming 2% more fuel per, per annum, than you would have versus uh, clean fuels that you had, clean and dry fuel, then that's that's quite a big number considering your your initial uh, consumption was about 71 million liters of diesel a year. So 2% makes a, a massive difference. So by improving your maintenance practices, you know that may result in that saving that you can, that you're seeing there of uh, about $6.8 .8, 8 million. So that's over a year period. And um, that's considering the, uh, the failures that they were experiencing on that side. Um, but like we said, or like the, the hard thing to, to measure and to quantify is the, the labor and the downtime and not being able to, to sweat your asset properly. Uh, next slide. So we did partner with our distributor for this end user. Um, we always do. Uh, we don't go directly to end users and just fit our stuff as, as a Donaldson, as a company. We do work through our authorized distribution channels. So we installed the filters on the engine and um, and, and compared it to the competitor or the OEM uh, parts. Um, so in brief, the what, what happened on, with, with this specific application, the secondary filters were blocking quickly. The fuel system pressurized, uh, the G-rotor pump was bypassing, it was overheating, so excessive heat caused the seals to fail. And yeah, that just destroyed the G-rotor pump. Ultimately, the uh, the competitor inner pack media packs were collapsing, and uh, that allowed the stop contaminant downstream, uh, causing you know additional failures as well. Next slide. Thank you. Um, so that was a in field study uh, in the laboratory. Our numbers compare very nicely as well. Um, so I think what's very important from this slide is to show that you know we. We still we don't compromise on the capacity, the digital the capacity, and we still run four times cleaner fuel results uh, compared to you know our closest competitor. Um, what, what's important to note is that it's over the life of the filter. Um, we aren't selecting the initial point that favors our cause. Um, a, a lot of competitors will select certain info that they like to show you. They'll show over the whole life of this element, you are protected and you are covered. So yeah, four times cleaner fuel, and it doesn't cost four times the price of the competitor. Also very important to note. Next slide. So this 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 mining company, they tried our uh, filters in good faith. That's the the ones that we uh, showed the pictures there. The G rotors, uh, G rotor pumps failures were costing them a lot. The the part that we fitted, the DBF part number there, stopped all G rotor pump premature failures. And it extended the service intervals from 500 to 1,250. So that they were struggling, like we said, to get you 500 hours. They were reaching about 490 that before that, uh, the filters collapsed. And then with, after the fitment, they were able to achieve about 1,250 hours. So that improved the customer's short, short and long-term operations. And uh, yeah, all the failures have stopped since then. Next slide. So yeah, just some interesting facts, you know, to keep in the back of your mind or something that you, know, you don't always understand or you know about uh, to just help paint the picture. So how much air does a, 
you know, be called truck use or consume or burn. So on average, it's about 20,000 liters of air for each liter of diesel that it sucks. So it sucks about 20,000 liters of air for every little liter of diesel that you burn. Um, obviously, this varies from engine to engine model, um, but most uh, common or, or new models consume between 12 and 20,000 liters. So when you're considering your ambient dust uh, that's just hanging in the air across the mine site, just imagine that engine may consume about 100 million liters of air a day, you know, if it burns between 4,000, 5,000 liters of diesel a day. Um, and that pre presents a serious challenge uh, that, you know, and, and that demands exceptional performance and quality out of your filter. Um, applications such as drill rigs, that's probably the worst that, that we see in the industry because a drill rig is stationary, it just stands still and the dust is creating. Um, other equipments like loaders, graders, excavators, also have extreme environments, um, you know, perhaps a bit more compared to an old truck, but definitely they all ex experience extreme environments in which they operate. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we need the, the air filter to protect the engine from airborne contamination. I mean, dust is the obvious one, um, but also so is smoke, suit, uh, suit is, I think, probably a bit more um, applicable in your underground environment. So where your mines, you know, you've got a confined space, your exhaust fumes aren't really, uh, they've got ventilations uh, in the shafts, obviously, but the suit is still a big problem because a lot of the times of, of the other equipment is designed, your intake is very close to exhaust. So, you know, we had to come up with a solution for that. And then also carbon, it's supposed to keep out carbon, rain, snow, pollen, range of other contaminants. Um, and according to the Cummins company, um, it states that on average it takes approximately one gram of dust per horsepower of a diesel engine to destroy it. Meaning that if you had a 500 horsepower engine, um, it would take about half a kilogram of dust uh, over its lifetime. And that's all that's required to damage it. So I think the critical point is that, you know, the dust that can be let through a media or enters the housing and clean um, and clean the air out during the routine services. But when you do your routine services during uh, maintenance, the amount of dust that can fall in is very limited. Uh, next slide. Thank you. So just also to show again a small difference or the way we 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 show it is the efficiency uh, rating of an air filter makes a big difference on the amount of dust that can bypass to the engine. Um, so these tubes or vials that you're seeing there, for every one kilo, uh, kilogram of dust that goes into the filter, that vial shows you how much dust, dust uh, bypass on the different efficiency levels. Um, notice the, the big difference between the 99 and the 99.9. Um, so that's the amount of dust that, will go, that you will see on the clean side of your air filter. Um, so to, And just also worth mentioning is that Donaldson uh, publishes their uh, efficiencies, <clears throat> um, whereas competitors are very seldom selective, you know, in, in what they make available to you. Whereas we will, even if you go onto our, our webpage on our toolbox, you can see the efficiency and, um, you know, you can make your call from there. Next slide. So engineered for harsh environment. So Let's just take a look at uh, how do we solve these, these issues. Onto the next slide, Pirian. So cellulose air filters is, is the least efficient filter that we know. Um, some dust bypasses straight through to your engine from the word go due to the initial inefficiency. And other dust becomes trapped into the fibers, increasing the restriction and improving the efficiency of the filter. Um, it progressively uh, bolts up dust from inside until it blocks, and then you have to throw it away. Uh, so, and then and that's on the left-hand side. So if you look there, the big uh, black circles, that uh, symbolizes your um, cellulose fibers with the dust particles uh, ingressing in between the, the, the cellulose media. And that's what causes your restriction. And that as, as it builds up, it prevents more, less and less and dust from passing through until it builds up so much that you have to throw it away. On the right-hand side, we've got our ultraweb media. So it's got a nanofiber layer on it. Um, so it still has a cellulose substrate, um, but it's got a very fine spiderweb layer on top of it, 
which uh, still allows some dust to penetrate into the, the cellulose. But from the first minute, it's fitted. It provides your engine with cleaner air, improving the engine and uh, engine life and reducing the contam contaminant ingress. Um, because of the bulk dust, uh, dust layer forming on the top of the, um, the nanofiber layer, that if, if you're housing a setup correctly, when the engine backs off, so when you decelerate uh, or uh, due to vibration, a lot of that dust that's built up on the, inside, that, uh, on the outside, that dust cake, will fall off and um, providing you with a longer service life. So your restriction stays longer than that of a cellulose filter and often reducing your fuel burn. So in some vehicle reports, there's also increased of power, uh, reduced suit indexes uh, in, the, in the oils are reported. And then also there's, we've seen lower um, uh, engine temperatures, meaning that your exhaust gases that's emitted also are coming out a bit lower. And we've also done some trials recently where we've seen that the nanofiber layer has, has got some uh, rigidity to it in, in some in, in underground humid environments. Next slide. So what does the extra nine mean? The difference between 99 and 99.99. So that's comparing, um, so the, 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 the first one, the 99.99 in the middle, that's the Donaldson UltraWeb. And then we've got UltraWeb HD, which is the, the most recent one. Um, uh, and that's in, in high in high flow engines. And um, you can see how little dust it, it, it lets through. So on the HD, it lets through 0 0.01 grams. And that's compared to one kilogram of dust that's been fed into that machine. So that's very close to an absolute filter rating. Um, just a few uh, or a handful of um, benefits of the Altrep, reduce your suit index, um, reduce silica uh, readings in your oil. Um, just a, a asterisk there, note that, um, you, that that silica relates to sand. So if there's any other forms of silica within your internal combustion engine, like sealant, uh, it's obviously not going to stop that. That refers to um, dirt and dust. Uh, you've got to reduce uh, fuel burn, uh, reduce your fuel burn, uh, increase your element life, increase your engine life, and increase your power output. Uh, we do see that quite frequently when we put them on the dyno that there is a significant increase just by changing an element, which we would, you wouldn't think was possible. Uh, comparing the UltraWeb HD to the regular UltraWeb, um, uh, what we're seeing there is that the UltraWeb HD is 7.5 times uh, more efficient. So it, it, le it allows 7.5 times less dust through. And then comparing it to cellulose media, um, it's 40 times uh, more efficient, which means 40 times less the amount of dust gets passed through. Um, yeah, on, on, and on, sorry, and assuming that everything's correct, um, that your blue element will provide you with a longer element life. Uh, the, the, ex the life extension would vary from site to site and application to application. And I, I think it, it brings you to the, the point where you should know that you should know the dust you're operating in. Dust from, um, let's say, somewhere in the Northern Cape isn't exactly the same as the dust in an underground coal mine. So know your dust, know your operations, and uh, you know, we, we can help you figure out what's best for you. Next slide. Thank you. Um, so yeah, also was a, a old truck challenge, um, a mining truck. So the, the, the they also had an issue on the, 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 the air cleaners. So they had frequent maintenance. They had to change it out on a thousand hours. Um, they, the filters were cleaned every 500 hours and they had high machine downtime. Uh, I just want to say from this case study, what was this? We, we picked it up. So, Donaldson, South Africa, we don't condone cleaning of filters. Um, it's, it's being penny wash, pound foolish. Uh, your dirt is embedded in the media. So, you can't see if it's clean. Um, and, and using a compressor, you blow holes in your media, you're transferring your dirt from the dirty side of the element to the clean side of the element. And, um, you know, if I haven't seen it done with water or soap, but, you know, water and paper, they don't mix well together. So, yeah, you do change your your, your fiber structure there. Um, and your, your warranty will be voided if, you know, if we if, if, if you put in a claim or something like that. So, yeah, don't wash your filters, please. <laughs> Next slide. 
Okay. So the solution for, for that end user, what we did is we provided them with the blue elements, uh, the nanofiber. Uh, so that's the just the standard ultra web, uh, the 99.9% .9 efficiency and uh, extended the VAC valves. So the target service life was, and that we achieved was 2,500 service, uh, 205,000 hours. And so that's two and a half times the element life. So that's five times less service that they have to perform in a year. Next slide. Uh, just trying to make you more aware of some of the applications. So we have premium products in each group. Um, they cover, cover about 6,000 different applications. Um, on the left-hand side, there is a, an example from a coal mine of a big old truck. So they had change outs on every 4,000 hours, but worth mentioning at every 2,000 hours, they had to replace the left-hand side of the uh, old truck's elements. And that's because of oncoming traffic, how they were traveling. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll see the comments just a bit later. Um, and so at 2,000 hours, the left-hand side had to be changed. So it's either your traffic or your loading point, how you load your trucks. Um, you'll, you'll normally see that one side will get clock, gets clocked up quicker. So there we change it with our ultra web media. <clears throat> um, and yeah, we, we showed a nice cost saving there of 53% and also the efficiency in, increased. So that, those tr that trial we ran to 6,277 hours with the blue elements. So that was a, a nice considerable extension uh, over the 4,000 what they were getting. Um, on the right is the articulator truck. So that's on the engine loop filter where we changed the Donaldson element out with uh, our blue version, with a Syntec version. And um, yeah, the, the services there were increased or the, this was able to reach 1,100 hours. So if you look at the cost of your filter versus at what time you have to change it out, uh, it works you out a lot cheaper to go for the premium product, keeping in mind that you have to service on restriction. Uh, we always advise servicing on restriction. So if you've got the right equipment in place. Um, and like I said, we've got different technologies for air. We've got uh, Donaldson Ultra Web for uh, lubrication systems on your engine at Syntec. Uh, for fuel at Syntec XP. And uh, for our hydraulic range, our latest media technology is uh, Alpha Web, which caters a lot for cyclic flow in, in hydraulic systems. So we, every filter up till now has been tested for uh, a, a constant flow, cyclic flow, which is real world, world conditions. Um, we see, we'll see that coming into the into play a lot quicker in, in the future. Um, so yeah, I think that's what I've got. Uh, Peter Jan, next slide. Right, yeah, so just think about beyond the machine, you know, total cost of ownership. It's not just the filter you're replacing. Um, you're not just putting in fuel. Um, uh, it's, it really is a, a total a mindset that needs to uh, involve and encumber you. I, and, it, and I understand it won't be for everyone. A lot of people um, will have buyers and procurement people making the calls. And but if if you're not going to drive it, then you know you're going to see a, a higher cost operating expense versus some of the examples we've seen now. And a lot of these mines, and actually all of them, they don't want to share these results and these case studies because they believe they invested in it. They they took a leap of faith. And the advantage they're getting is their competitive advantage. So you'll see on none of these, we, we were able to say which sites they were perform on because the end users don't want to make it. it. It shouldn't be a secret, but they don't want to make it you know, public knowledge. And unfortunately, we don't have any control over that. It is their equipment. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Peter. Yeah, thank you for that, Ivan and Peter Jan. Um, yeah, as you can see, some good technology that, that is used. And as a Donaldson distributor, I felt Fultus does use that technology. And we also use the premium products a lot in, in our operations where we help customers. So today I will just discuss some TCO, how we utilize this technology in practice. But let me give you an overview of why felt filters first. As can be seen, we were established a long time ago, in fact, in 1978. 
and we have been a Donaldson distributor from the outset in that period. We are a level one triple BE company and also black female owned company as well. So our leading dis uh, Donaldson distributor, as I said, and we're situated in the coal fields with a dedicated team of uh, people operating in both the engine and hydraulic categories. Obviously hydraulic a lot in the underground uh, mining business as well. So we have relationships with most of the major mining companies that operate in both the open cost and underground operations or a combination of both of these. And we also operate with a lot of the mining companies that do contract mining for, for these major companies as well. So we have a, a large uh, customer base that we operate with in our region. So the next one, Peter Jan, thank you. So the markets that we participate in, mostly the markets mentioned there, but our main focus remains in the mining business, in both the open cost and underground mining, where we operate with a continuous mining cars, shuttle cars, roof bolters, etc. And we also classify the construction equipment into those categories because a lot of that construction equipment operates in that period. We also operate in the agriculture, paper and pulp, and industrial markets as well. Next slide, please, Peter Jan. So our footprint, yeah, as we can see, it stretches over a vast area of the Mpumalanga region, with, um, and that is where the coal mining industry is operated. Our head office is situated in Emelashlini, or Whitbank, as everybody knows it, with branches in Middleburg, Secunda, Ermelo, and Dalmas. And those branches operate mostly and so, or service the coal mining industry. So we are very close to our customer base uh, in those regions. And between those branches, we supply our stock. We keep stock at all the branches, which we transfer between the customers and make sure that we can service our customers quite reliably. So we also manage a number of uh, vendor management sites. So where we have either store facilities on these sites with inventory that we own, but we manage it on the customer's behalf. And this facilitates the maintenance requirements or service programs that the customers have. But I will touch on that subject more during the presentation as well. So on the next slide, our capabilities. So our cap current capabilities uh, are as follows, but we do not limit ourselves to this. So these, we will customize our offering based on customer requirements as well. So we develop kits for both the underground and open cost mining services. So this is normally based on the customer maintenance philosophy. As each customer has their own philosophy, you might have different operations in the same group that have a different uh, um, service philosophy, but some will have a requirement for kits while others will have a preference to supply loose filters and they do their maintenance based on, on that. So we do TCO programs, the total, total cost of ownership, as Ivan explained. So mostly on the primary production equipment, but that's also based on customer service philosophy. And it's also the utilization of hybrid kits, which I will also touch on a bit later as well. The vendor management inventory, because I say we've, that we do, as well as the supply of oil and lubricants uh, in that systems as well. We also do some filtration at enhancements where our equipment first fit, does not always meet the requirements of operating in some of the extreme operating conditions that we have in this African environment. So a good example is fitting pre-cleaners as well as exhaust ejectors to ensure air systems are operate adequately. So just taking in mind that the dust loading in the African environment is seven times higher than it is in a European or even an Asian environment. So the first fit is not always necessarily the best fit for that equipment. And you need to do some um, changes or modifications to ensure that the equipment is protected adequately. So we also do some contamination control programs um, where we take responsibility for customers' contaminated fluids and we supply filtration solutions 
to ensure that the cleanliness levels are kept on that as well. And then lastly, we also do retrofits on, e on equipment where we replace OEM filtration and improve that filtration and make sure that the systems operate properly. And that is mostly on the air as well as on the, the, the hydraulic and fuel systems as well for the customers, as Ivan illustrated earlier as well. Uh, next slide, please, Peter Jan. Yeah, so, yeah, continue, please. So really, what is a, a cost of, of total cost of ownership? Obviously, that's a cost associated with that equipment where you can calculate as well. So that calculated is the purchasing price of the equipment, obviously putting the equipment into service. Remember, some of that equipment is fairly large. It's got to be transported in pieces and then putting it into service. So that is calculated in it. The cost of maintenance and the cost of space and consumables, which will be included in there as well. And the overall utilization of that equipment, that can be calculated as well. So a lot of mines will check the utilization at the end of the month and um, calculate how much production they've had out of it. And obviously at the end of it, once that equipment is used up, the retirement of that equipment, you know what the cost is, if you're going to sell it off or if it needs to be scrapped, etc. So that can be calculated. What cannot be calculated in that is standing time. I see how many times have you waited outside um, outside a, a, a workshop and the equipment is standing, it doesn't operate, and it's time that you cannot calculate and it, the loss of, cal loss of production, also difficult to calculate, and then consequential losses of that. So, so what are the, the consequential losses? It's loss of profit, et cetera which very seldom can be calculated by, by the customers. Next slide, please. Yeah, so, so who do we, who can use um, total cost of ownership? Okay, so the total cost of, who, who can use that? That is normally uh, customers, end users wishing to extend their service intervals. A lot of people play, um, that want to extend it don't always know that they can extend it. And they, um, yeah, they, they, they do not understand the programs as well. So we also have um, the fact that there's different grades of filtration as Ivan explained earlier. So standard filtration on there will um, obviously meet the OEM specifications, or in certain instances, this is better than, than OEM specifications as well. So when you go onto an endurance filtration program, understand there's different, different types of media, as Ivan explained there, and these are available for customers to, to utilize. So understanding these difference makes the decision making a lot easier for that end user and the end user cannot ever not just change from a, a standard filtration program onto an endurance program without getting the basics right so if you are going to change at the st standard service intervals of 250 hours etc you can remain on a standard media program as you will be wasting your money going on to onto the endurance program you might get better filtration but you are actually wasting some money in, in instances like that. So the basics here is changing that air filtration based on restriction methods, so putting restriction gauges across the equipment and making sure that you, you, you check that and make sure that your intake systems are, are not blocked and um, there's also a requirement on the oil samples that you are taking the oil samples. And most importantly, when you get those reports back on the oil samples is that they are checked because I can't tell you how many times I've seen samples or, or um, the, the, the reports coming back and they just put on somebody's desk. Nobody checks them. Or in a lot of instances, a lot of people don't understand um, the the reports that come back and what the contents of it is so that they just left and if there's a failure 
and the equipment uh, uh, seizes or breaks, then you can look at the, the, the service reports or the contamination reports and you find that, that there was a failure two reports ago, but nobody bothered uh, to even look at that as well. So also understanding the source of that contamination. A good example is at fuel dispensing stations. How many times do you see that fuel nozzle, somebody's filled it up, just drop the, 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 the filling nozzle onto the ground, picks up dust and people put it into the next vehicle, filling up the tanks as well. And well, if well is dispensed as well, you see they've used contaminated containers which contain other oils and the, the oils are mixed and they, they fill up their vehicles with, with oil in, in, in um, that contaminated container. So if we look at the challenges of the endurance programs, yeah, I think if one of the big myths is that OEM parts are better than aftermarket parts or as a lot of people call aftermarket parts, pirate parts. Look, obviously there are some bad products in the market, but not all aftermarkets are equal, aftermarket market parts are equal. Whereas Donaldson is classified as an OPM or original parts manufacturer. So they manufacture parts for the OEMs and your aftermarket parts are the equivalent or in some instances, even, even better than that. So where customers bring in cost reduction programs, you will see that they compare and once they're on an endurance program, they get somebody, a competitor or somebody in and they start cross-referencing filters, checking that filter and then they cross-reference the endurance filter to a lower grade filtration. And because of the price, they reduce those programs and your endurance program disappears down the chute. Exactly the same with changes of personnel where people have a preference for a different company. They're already running a decent endurance program and they change from that as well onto standard product and that endurance program is not utilized any longer. We're also finding a lot in the market lately is the utilization of third party purchasing companies. So these third party purchasing companies, their mandate is to reduce the overall purchasing budget. And exactly the same happens where they look at cost and nothing else um, because they have a minimal understanding that the cheapest is not always the best, but they will supply the cheapest because that is their mandate and they get paid to do that as well. And in a lot of instances, you have an unalignment of uh, KPIs between the production, maintenance, and purchasing people. So each of their own KPIs, these differ, and the, they don't talk to each other, and these programs disappear. They do, not, uh, op they do not work effectively at all. So what do we do on TCO improvement? Yeah, firstly, surveys to equipment. We obviously have to look at equipment. You find two equipment pieces of equipment, exactly the same models, purchased two or three months apart, and the filtration on that differs because the OEM has decided to change filtration as well. Or in some instances where equipment was brought in from other operations, filtration is different. You need to survey that equipment to make sure that what you're supplying is a is hundred percent correct. Also, build the custom kits for HME construction and underground mining equipment. So most of these kits, eighty percent of those kits will or it will contain Donaldson kits, Donaldson products, including the seals and O-rings, etc. Either for full endurance programs. Some of them will have standard cellulose media, obviously dependent on the customer's requirements or it could be a combination of both. So a real hybrid kit as well. And then there's some hybrid kits that contain both uh, Donaldson as well as OEM filters. Obviously some customers have warranties that they want to keep in place. So they want to keep the OEM, especially fuel filters. And uh, 
customers have a preference for some OEM filters as part of the machine, but quite happily to or quite happy to change uh, to Donaldson in others. But some of the filters will be both. So really a hybrid uh, portion of that. So vendor management inventory. I've spoken about that where we do programs like that. We have, as I said, a number of sites where we do the filters, the lubes, hydraulic fluids on those sites and we do the on the on-site condition monitoring. So we make sure that the lubes have correct filtration with, at dispensing. We also do the oil sampling for the customer, make sure that when the reports come back that they understand what the reports contain um, and make sure that that equipment is in, in, in optimal operation. If we find any any problems on that report, which is obviously a very important part of it, that the customer understands it and that we can intervene in, in the, those cases and make sure that the, the equipment continues operating correctly. And then obviously a lot of the on the underground mining contamination control programs, we do that oil sampling, that oil and lube reporting analysis. We also do the diagnostic reports for the customers. So at the moment, we're currently working with a partner, but in future, we will establish our own laboratories. The plan is in our, during the next 12 months that we will establish laboratories in most of uh, operations where we have the larger customers operating and we will do our own uh, value added uh, reports and sampling etc so a big investment in into the laboratory side and also on some of the sites we will also put laboratories um, as part of that vendor management uh, system to to make sure that uh, the machines are operating optimally. And I think that is me. Thank you. Thank you, Ian, for a valuable contribution. So we're, this brings us to the last part of the webinar. Um, and basically it's, uh, it's about the choices. So your choice for peace of mind when it comes to improving operational efficiency and how to choose for quality in all forms, not only products, technology, but also in service and support, you can get to reach your improvement targets as being explained by uh, by even an Ian uh, in greater detail. Basically, it's very straightforward how to get started. So it's never a quick fix. You all know that. It's never a quick fix in when it comes to sustainable improvements. So you have seen the examples uh, of how we take a pragmatic approach. Uh, as we understand that the phased method is always better. Uh, hence, you know, we start always with the validation phase in which we are going to understand your realities better uh, with getting a clear view on your operations, your maintenance, your filtration realities, as we can call them. And here we validate and consolidate your needs. You know, you assess your situation based on data because the proof is in the data. And there is where we can see how value can be added. So in that second phase, basically the second phase is based upon data points. is to implement our plan for improvement. And these can be trials, as mentioned. Um, but it can also start with an in-depth assessment of your equipment and where we just look at the overall cleanliness and present you solutions on how to present, how to improve these. And then the third one, the third phase, is where we're taking the responsibility to provide you with that peace of mind. So by, by monitoring and reporting on the progress made and how these enhancements are actually providing you with value that we are offering. Hereby, and based upon data, we will always look for those continuous improvements. So, but it doesn't, set, it doesn't stop with that. So based upon your needs and on-site realities, we do offer that additional service and support, as also mentioned by Ian and Ian. So from that commercial support can be an ERP integration or can be to the on-site stock, uh, um, on stock holding in collaboration with distribution partners. 
So whenever service is required, we will assure our experts are there to support. As you can see from monthly assessment meetings to understanding planning and supply chain requirements. To also technical support, where, you know, getting insights in how, you know, the applied improvements are truly having an effect. And it's important, you know, seeing those improved planning levels or keep monitoring on how we further develop maintenance programs and methods, things like that. So that was in, in, in general about how our services are towards the mining industry. And just a few more slides about Donaldson. So just to frame our company and inform you how and who we are actually. Basically, Donaldson, our company, our story is driven by one purpose. So advanced infiltration for clean work. This mission goes beyond the business. It's really about creating a, a kind of a legacy, a positive impact on the environment and society. So every product that we develop and every innovation we introduce is a step towards, for us and in total, a cleaner, more sustainable future. It's what filtration is all about, basically. So, and we are around already for 105 years. And every day we continue to invest in that purpose. And it states by the numbers. So numbers tell the story of growth and impact and commitment. So basically we are a $3.4 billion company and we have over 2,800 patents. That means infiltration in how we are, you know, advancing our filtration for a cleaner world. So making sure that we have a, a global presence uh, over 80 locations, we continue to invest every day and yearly about 18 million in R&D. And that shows really that we're pushing every day again, those boundaries of filtration technology. As you can see, you know, our global footprint is actually a testament to our reach and ad adaptability. We're not just present worldwide. So what we really strive for is to, to resonate with local communities, understanding and addressing their specific needs. This global local approach has been key to our success and the relevance, that's important, the relevance across different markets. So, and we have, of course, strategically implemented manufacturing and distribution centers to allow us to move fast, to be agile, to deliver you know, the quality products in each corner of the world. And of course, cannot do this alone. We are backed up by a vast distribution network um, that are very close to where uh, our customers meet us. And just about the last slide, but definitely very important to us, sustainability is at the heart of our narrative. It's about, you know, the commitment to a future where filtration technology plays a role in preserving the planet. You know, our solutions are not just meeting those needs, they are really foreseeing and shaping a sustainable future. So our sustainability strategy, filtration for a thriving future, is grounded on our purpose. A purpose, advancing filtration for a cleaner world. So this strategy really represents the choices made to ensure products and practices have a positive impact and create a thriving future for people and the planet. So this was the webinar for now, uh, and we are open for um, Q&A. So Renilda, if you can, or Renette, can, if you can assist us on that, that would be appreciated. Certainly. Um, Peter Jan, I'll just go through the questions that have come through. We've got five of them so far. Um, I'll just start at the top. So um, whoever is the right person to answer can just go ahead with that. We've got a question from Charles, and he asks, does Donaldson have any products available to remove water from oils? Um, he says that would include free, dissolved, as well as emulsified water. Um, yes, we do. Um, emulsified water becomes a bit tricky. Then you need to do some capital investment. And that's through our sister company, Donaldson Hypro. Um, so they got big vacuum dehydrators. Um, but yeah, that's something that if you want to reach out afterwards, we can put you in touch there with the right people. Great. I have shared Donaldson's website address in the chat, and it will also be in follow-up email. So if anybody would like to contact you, they can do that. 
The next question also relates to water. And they are asking, um, it's Maredi, and he um, or she asks, do the filters work on water treatment plants? I'm not sure if that's a similar answer to uh, before. No, no. So, no, we don't do any water filtration products as such. So, no, we don't offer anything for water treatment plants. The next question comes from Irvin Lelai, and um, they ask, do you have filters that are not for mining trucks? Yeah, the... The examples we shown here was um, basically around the audience and the structure for the mining community. So yes, we are very big in agriculture, uh, on road uh, construction. So just don't, don't, the examples was catered for this specific webinar. So yeah, there's definitely other filters. We have over ten thousand individual items, and I can't even think of the specific number of applications, but it's a lot. So yeah, we, we're basically in every market. All right. Then Stephen asked um, on a technical level uh, to please elaborate how the DBF5782 eliminated Gero, Gerota failure on the QSK60 MCRS engines, considering these failures were due to a combination of issues both internally on their design and external or their filtration motivated. I think, um, Ivan, you did respond to him. Would you like to give some feedback on that? No, I think it's fine. If there's anything else from Stephen on that, you can you can ask. Um, but yeah, it's like I said, it was it's probably the the um, secondary filters that were blocking up too quickly, and uh, yeah, the bypassing there. All right. And then the final question comes from Belinda. She just wants to know if um you outsource any of your work um for subcontracting. Um, I'm not sure if maybe this is something to discuss now. Otherwise, I can just get her to be in touch with you afterwards, and you can reach out that way. Yeah, yeah. She, I think she can contact Peter, yeah. That's perfect. Thanks, Belinda. If you would like to do that, then you can reach um, you can reach Donaldson on um, their website. Um, and we'll also share some information after that. And those are all the questions that have come through um, for now. Um, Peter, Jan, or um, Ian, or Ivan, if you've got any follow-up um, comments, then you're more than welcome to do that before we close off. No, I just saw there was one comment or question in the, the chat asking about if we recycle uh, our products or they get binned by the customer. The answer at this point is no. Uh, we are doing a lot of uh, work around sustainability to see what's the best way to dispose of uh, used filters. Obviously, the tricky one is your liquid filters. That's your media is impregnated with the oil. So for now, it looks like the best way is incineration. Um, but now we're looking at... Well, we, we're not looking to do it. We're looking at what technologies are there and we to guide our customers to as to what is the best way to dispose of it and reduce CO emissions and that type of thing. So we are very involved in that. So yeah, we, we're not physically doing it, but we are quite involved. Thank you for that information. Peter Young, anything from your side? Nope. Not from and us. Ian? I mean. Nothing from my side. Thank you very much for organizing this. It was great. Yeah. Thank you very much, everyone, then. Thank you for the questions. And that brings us to the end of the discussion. Um, thank you very much to Peter Jan Moons, Ivan Boerter, and Ian Dutoy for their input into the discussion. Thank you also to the attendees for taking the time to join us for this discussion on mining filtration solutions. If you're interested in hearing more about Donaldson, please visit their website at www.donaldson.com. For over 100 years, Donaldson has been solving customers' complex filtration needs and is today one of the largest providers of unique filtration technologies and high-quality filters and parts. The recording of today's webinar will be made available to all stakeholders, and if you have any additional questions, please be in touch. You can reach us at shannon at creamamedia.co.za. Thank you, everyone, for your time, and goodbye.